me again, and today's date is October 1st, 2022. It's a Saturday. If you hear screaming outside, it's my goose. He hears me going, hey, it's me again. And he's like, that's mom in there. She's calling for me. I'm going to call back. That's geese. This past week with MMTLP, there is news. More permits were filed to drill. This heavily coincides with last year, time-wise and amount-wise, with the continuous drilling clause for lease compliance. Okay, that was one possibility. The next question is, that's confusing a lot of people, is why was it Tug, and this was my question, why was it Tug Oil and Gas and now it's Hudspeth? It was Hudspeth for the continuous lease drilling? And I noticed, well, that's weird how it doesn't say Hudspeth like it did for the continuous drilling clause for the lease contingency. It said Tug Oil and Gas. That permit has since been amended to reflect Hudspeth. Does this mean that there isn't a buyer? No, it can still mean that there is a buyer. Why? Because where's the money coming from to drill? That's a big one. It could be, you know, buyer potentially is funding this, as I've cited. In other cases of big oil and gas, companies have taken control of the asset before a sale was announced. It could be somebody else funding this with their own money. Like, maybe Greg McCabe's funding this with his own money. It's hard to say, and we can only speculate at this point. There's going to be probably a lot of FUD saying that, see, it was just continuous drilling all along. Okay, how do you deal with that? And a lot of people are just going to get frustrated. To not get frustrated, that's their goal with the FUD, is either to confuse you or tire you out so you either don't buy or you sell and just walk away because you're tired of it. That's... If you can, don't don't fall for the FUD. If if you have the willpower, don't fall for the FUD. They're trying to get break your will. Your will is much stronger than that. I know because you listen to a lady in a bird costume, right? If you listen to a lady in a bird costume, your will is stronger than what you think it is. You can tolerate the bird costume. You can deal with the FUD. You see, it's remember your training. You've trained for this. You've trained for this. How do we fight the FUD? If there wasn't any oil and gas on this property, why are they drilling? Why continue to drill and pay all this money to drill random holes in the ground if there isn't oil and gas available? The FUD wanted you to believe that there was no oil and gas. Now all of a sudden they're saying, ha ha, you're just doing maintaining drilling. You're not, nothing's going to happen. It's like, If there wasn't oil and gas there, why would they continue to drill and put in all this resources? It doesn't make sense. To which I'm sure FUD will come up with something new and contradictory because the contradictory now is that they're drilling more wells to show oil and gas amounts, which FUD said that there was no oil and gas. You see, as time progresses, things kind of get contradictory on that end. It's not a bad thing. It's very positive for our assets. Speaking of oil and gas, I do have some well logs. Well logs are basically when you send in test equipment down an oil well to see what's down there. Because we don't have x-ray vision, right? We don't have this x-ray vision, As a result, we have to turn to tools and science to facilitate some sort of analysis so we can sort of get a picture of what's down there. Because you can't, you know, bisect the earth and just take a look-see. It's very hard to do. As a result, we got to drill a hole and send some test equipment down there. These are called well logs. And while I'm not an expert at this by any means, I've been trying to read up from experts to try and gain as much information as I can about these. And I I will do my best to try and relay you the information in a way that's really easy to understand. So let's pull up one of these well logs. It's a big, long, skinny file. It almost looks like a lie detector test. I will also pull up here, 
a different well log from somebody else. This is not our property, this well log. This is just like a benchmark well log from somebody else. So these different little columns with squiggly lines, they're called tracks. So if you take a class or you watch a lot of educational videos or online classes on how to do this, they'll call these tracks, track one, two, three, four. Reading from left to right. Track one, two, three, four. Different tracks have different valuations. In these well logs, we're only given two valuations. We're giving the rate of penetration, which is measured in feet per hour. The rate of penetration, how quickly the hole was drilled. In a term of feet per hour, that was the speed, feet per hour. That kind of hints at what kind of rock we're dealing with. Can the rock be naturally fractured? Is it already fractured? The next data point on this well log is the gamma radiation readings. In other well logs, you will also see a resistance reading measured in ohms. This one we don't have. These well logs are publicly available. You just had to know where to dig to get them. But I have them because they're publicly available. I'm only limited to the these two tracks. There's no ohm reading. If I had an ohm reading and a poricity reading, that would be awesome. But we can kind of wing it. Also, a lot of well logs will have potentiality readings. Is that to say that they didn't do all these readings? No. This is just the reading that we have publicly available to us. Those other readings could be very much private information. And we can't see them unless we're a potential buyer. <clears throat> but oftentimes the gamma radiation reading is used as a type of potentiality reading, which is great. And then we can use the rate of penetration to sort of guesstimate what kind of rock we're dealing with. Because if we're into shale, but the rate of penetration goes faster, like the speed is pretty quick or speeds up, you can guess that that shale is naturally fractured, has a lot of fractures in it, and thus the pressure of the drill bit is easily breaking that up because the rock's naturally fractured, which is great. Some well logs will also show like a flow through reading, how quickly liquids flow through it, which is great. But here we have just two readings, gamma radiation and rate of penetration. Now I explain to you what rate of penetration is that's measured in feet per hour. How many feet does that drill bit go within an hour? If it goes up, it's quicker. If it goes down, it's slower. If you run into shale and it speeds up, that shale is pretty naturally fractured. And there's a good chance there could be some hydrocarbons in there. Okay, for your shale plays. What's the gamma radiation? Well, there's gamma radiation all over the earth, all over that earth. Like you watch some sort of, they used to be called cool worlds and now there's something else that they're doing. But you're bombarded with particles all the time, particles everywhere particles just going through your body all day every day as we go through the universe we are bombarded with particles as earth forms and such it's bombarded with particles as a result there are gamma radiation particles everywhere some rock formations have more gamma radiation than others this is because shale is tighter and nothing flows through it as much thus it keeps in the gamma radiation particles not to say for fractured shale that's why we have multiple readings if you go by one reading you're like oh that's shale mm. but if you have multiple readings that say well this is heavily fractured shale hmm i wish there was the ohm reading on these logs but again beggars can't be choosers okay if the gamma radiation is high, it's likely shale. If it's low, you will hear this referred to as sands. That's not like sand on the beach. 
They refer to it as sandstone, but they call it sands. Sandstone. Sandstone is a bit more porous than shale is. Hence, it can hold oil better. And if liquids flow through it, either gas or oil or water, there's going to be less gamma radiation in there because things are flowing through it and moving that gamma radiation out. So knowing what you know now, we can sort of read into this. I will pull up here the well log, the AP number, that's the well identification number on this is 422-229-30281. That's the well ID number. The well name is University Masterson B10 number one. And if you scroll down here, check one on the left, that's rate of penetration measured in feet per hour. It goes from zero all the way to a thousand. Now they could have stopped it. When it goes to zero, that means they stopped it. There's no move. They, they're stopping it. And then on the right, it says GR API. Yeah, that's your gamma radiation. When the gamma radiation is higher, we are in shale, usually. When it is lower, we are in sandstone, and that's a very good indication of reservoir. If you scroll down to about 3,750 feet, you will see that there is a pretty big dip. just under 3,800, all the way up to 3,890. There's a pretty big dip there. It could be an indication of a reservoir. It could very well be an indication of a reservoir there. But let's go down a bit. Let's go down to about 3,900. Notice how the rate of penetration slightly increases at this dip in the graph. This could also be an indication of highly porous sandstone where the drill bit is able to penetrate the sandstone rather quickly because it's porous. If we go up to a shale play, let's say below this 4,100 mark, and the rate of penetration starts to increase, Maybe the shales here is rather fractured. If we go down to 4,200, notice how the rate of penetration drops down. And the gamma radiation increases. This could be a not-so-fractured shale, which then people would just say is shale. And if you keep going down, again, to... The 5,000 mark, you can see that the graph on the gamma radiation side dips back towards the left. That's an indication of sandstone. What really gets cool is about from 5,500 onward is that the gamma radiation is much less than further up the graph, like around 4,500 feet. This could possibly be a very big reservoir here at about 5,000 feet. And then again at 6,100, 6,050 feet, there's also a very big reservoir there. Does it mean that there's oil and gas here? Possibly. Does this mean it guarantees oil and gas? Here's the thing. We don't have the resistance reading. That's key because if you have a resistance reading where the two come together is a very good indication of a hydrocarbon. The well logs give us a very good measurement of what kind of formations we're dealing with with these equipments. Let's pull up another well log, shall we? Let's pull up the well log 
The name of this well is University Maverick A24 number 2. The AP on this well is 44-229-30283. At this particular log, you will notice that the gamma radiation reading is track 1 and the rate of penetration is track 2. This log starts reading at 50. D640, 5,640 feet down the well, and it goes all the way to 6,600 feet. If you notice, there's already some sandstone at 5,640 feet. The rate of penetration really starts reading at about 5,700 feet. If you can see here, tract one, there's quite a bit of evidence showing that that is a good formation for a reservoir. It dips back, goes to shale. If you see it, by the way, quickly dipping to sandstone and going back to shale, it can also be an indication that there's a shale sandstone mix. Formations in geology aren't always perfectly layered. Sometimes there is a mixture. I thought I'd let you know that. It's not always perfectly layered. So when you see a graph going, <laughs> that could be a mixture of shale and sandstone. Example, let's go down to 6350. That, you know, it's doing some wild portfolio swings. Maybe that's what it reminds you of. That could very well be an indication of a shale sandstone mixture. But if we go down to 6,450, look at that. It's very much like a sand, like a clean sand is what that would be called. And if you go down to 6,550, well, then that really drops off. That's, that's very clean sandstone there. Certainly worth a look. Notice on the rate of penetration, it goes down, but then it goes back up again. It's starting to swing around. That could be indications of hard to soft rock, which might be from fractures, or it might be that the porosity in that sandstone is very large, and thus the rate of penetration is able to increase. But myself, looking at these logs personally, there's lots of evidence for very big reservoirs. And I'm very excited. Maybe this is indicative of some of those new plays that they were talking about in the S1. How they said new plays were discovered. Maybe this is indicative of that. Again, we do not have the ohm readings. That's the resistivity readings and the actual porosity readings themselves that would help. But, you know, I'll take whatever I can get, right? I'll take whatever breadcrumbs I can get. I'm a pigeon. It's great. I'm also currently waiting on other people to chime in with what they think. I've asked a few people. I'm waiting on responses, but this is what I think now. It's subject to change. I reach out to people. I reach out to multiple sources. I want to see what they think. So nobody is like collaborating this. It's all decentralized because I want to see what opinions match up with what. Am I right? Am I wrong? We'll see. You know, if I'm right, great. If I'm wrong, oh, I'll show you where I went wrong at. I thought it was this. No, bird lady turned out to be this. So this in itself is subject to change with those log readings. But right now I'm really excited because there's quite a lot of evidence of, of bigger reservoirs, which could mean significantly more oil and gas for us. Wouldn't that be awesome if, like, the new well logs come out or there's some PR that comes out because if I'm reading the logs correctly, you know, there's some big reservoirs here at, at certain feet. I'm very excited about that. Hopefully I'm right on this. Okay, guys, that's it for today. I will see you soon. Goodbye.